Okay, let's get going. Um, welcome, everybody. This is going to be a little bit different than the last uh, eight or 10 webinars in that I don't have a special guest this week on purpose. We will have some more carrier guests join us in the weeks ahead, but today I wanted to get into a different theme of getting back to some of the, the basic fundamentals but on an advanced level, so that because you know you you are you're all experienced, but um, I I want to figure out what's keeping us from writing more business. To be frank, again, every week I come on here and I tell you our mission statement is to help you grow your practice to whatever you consider to be successful, and as long as it's not illegal or immoral, we'll we will accommodate. But um, I hardly ever hear from anybody saying I need help with this or that, and. More importantly, it's not like I'm getting flooded with new business, so I'm concerned, not for me, for you, as to uh, what we can do to help you make more money. So that's what we're all about at um, NAIS and FPS. So with that, let's get into it today. Um, here's what we're going to talk about. I updated some slides I had from a about three years ago that said, used to say plan design 2021. Now I have, it says plan design 2024. And I want to talk ever since LT, ILTCI, I've been getting a lot of feedback from people that were there that talk about, you know, the, some of the thinking that goes toward into plan design today. And more than ever, it's, it's very important that we design, especially to affordability. So people not only get the coverage, but keep the coverage. So I wanted to just talk about some of those things in the first few slides, and we'll do that. And then I'll share with you some carrier updates. They're still coming in as we talk, so anything we've missed during this call, I'll add to the to the email that um, uh, accompanies this with the recording. Some news you can use, and then we're going to start a series. It's only going to be a two-part series, but if, if Mel Brooks can do it in two parts, on the history of the world, I guess I can do it in two parts too. This is going to be everything you should know about life, part one. So we'll stay tuned for that. All right. Let's talk about plan design in today's day and age. Um, the, the single most important thing is that you make sure you design a plan that your client finds affordable. Not maybe affordable, absolutely, no doubt you're comfortable, He's com she's comfortable that it's going to be affordable, not only now, but if they're still working for when they stop working or as they get older, et cetera, right? Because affordability is the reason for all the, the why a client cancels a policy after the fact. Extended care, like long-term care, sticks unlike almost all your other insurances, it sticks forever, um, either until the client passes away or goes on claim, it it uh, it stays on the books and you keep getting paid for it. And that's what those that's what the magic of renewals are all about. But if you want to make sure your policies stick, you've guess first and foremost got to make sure that that the plan's affordable. All right. So again, here, the number one reason for lapses, is affordability. The number one reason for not taking out is lack of affordability. The number one reason why prospects don't pr proceed to the application, and they're not going to say this to you, they're going to give you every other excuse in, in the world, but it's lack of affordability. And reason people cancel after the fact, lack of affordability. So everything comes back to that. So when you sense that that might be an issue as an interviewer or field underwriter, You've got to run straight at that. You don't ignore it. You don't hide from it. You you um, uh, you, you bring it up because that's what interviewer field underwriters do. Salespeople might be afraid to talk about it because they're afraid to lose the sale. But what good is it if it's not going to stay on the books? If you sense hesitation, you need to go right at it. And again, remember, they're not going to tell you it's affordability up front. You're going to have to ask them. And the best way you do that is to say i sense you're you're on the fence a little bit here uh harry uh you want to share with me what you're thinking and um you know they say well I, you know i'm not sure but i got i just think i got to think about it okay well what is it you want to think about it exactly maybe i can help you give you some more information on that do you want to think about how the benefits work do you want to think about 
um, exactly how the claims are going to get paid, or is it the price, the cost that you're concerned about? Which, what is it you want to think about? So you always give them choices. You don't just simply say, what do you want to think about? You say, are these the things so that they can say to you, well, I am a little concerned about the cash flow. Well, let's work that out then, because I don't want you getting a plan that you have to decide whether you're going to eat that week or pay your insurance. You, this has got to be something that just fits into your life. And certainly having something is better than nothing. So let's talk about exactly how we what we can do to reduce this or make it more affordable for you. And again, by addressing that straight up, it solidifies your your role as an interviewer, field underwriter, it shows them that you concern, you're concerned for them, you're putting them first, and it creates a much longer lasting client relationship. All right, so. Hey, Mark. What, yes, sir. Basically, what I say to somebody is. Oh, you're on here. I just was talking about you. No way. Don't talk yeah. about me today. You know, nice things, too. I don't want you to think the opposite, but go ahead. So. Your friend Bob, Bob is on the phone with us today. I know Bob was texting me. He said, how uh, beautiful you look today. Oh, uh, good. Well, I'm not on camera, so thank you for that. But go ahead. Well, that's why he looks. He thinks you're beautiful. Everyone, this is Steve Weinberger. If you don't know, this is the number one guy in our, our agency for Manhattan Life and, and, and uh, the king of bundling. So now by introduction, you were going to say, Stephen? So what, what I do is... Um, say to the customer uh, at the end, you're, you're, when you feel like that that price may be a little bit too much for somebody, you would say, or I would say, hey, besides uh, um, the price, are, is there any objections of any of the coverages? And go. so then they'll say no. So then I'll know it's the price. And it's just a nice way to say, you know, that, I understand that you need something a little less pricey. Yeah, good, Stephen, and thank you for sharing that. Stephen is really good at, at, at questions, so that's a great tip he just gave you. Uh, and I'm glad you're here, Stephen. You feel free to comment as we go. I said there weren't any special guests today, but you're a special guest, so we're, we're glad you're here. So what do you need to know about a client before you can design a plan in order to make sure it's affordable? You need to know about their savings and investments. All right. Again, you can't just simply say, how much money do you have without getting back feedback that said, well, it's none of your business. You got to ask specific questions and you should always start with the home. Um, do you own your own home? Are you and the bank own the home? Oh, yes. No, we've been living here 20 years. Great. So you must have built up some equity in the house. Oh, yeah. Right now we, we got whatever. You let them answer. All right. And after it, you say, well, how much do you think your home is worth? Nobody thinks that the price of their home is any secret, so they won't resist asking that. Oh, I guess these houses are going for six hundred thousand dollars now. Okay, we bought it for three hundred, but it's going for like six hundred now. Wow, it's great. So you got some great appreciation. Great. So, the, um, uh, it, so you've made some money just off the house itself. But let's put the house aside for a second, and let me ask you if. You don't count the house. What would you say you have in savings or investments? A rough number, you know, whatever. It doesn't have to be exact, but but not, don't count the equity of the house. See, the more you ask specifics, the more they'll answer you. Well, we've saved about a half million dollars. Okay, great. By the way, do you have that money uh, invested? Do you earn an interest on that money? Well, yeah, we sure do. Well, do you take that interest in? Live off of it every year? Uh, no, we let it roll over. Or yes, we, we, we use it to pay tax. Whatever the answer, you just need to learn what they're doing because that's the way they should be paying for the policy. Not You don't ever want them to touch the principle of their savings. If they have to use their savings, they shouldn't be getting this insurance. The insurance is to protect their savings. That's the whole purpose. Asset protection is the main reason for these products. Most people think it's all about health. It isn't. It's about protecting. It's again, I like to say it's not health ins insurance. It's wealth insurance. It's about protecting that savings. Um, and so you need to find out and be conservative. Over the last five years, what would you say you've been earning on, on your investments? Is 5% uh, sound fair? 
Well, no, no, no. We've been hurting more than that. Well, great. Um, that's even better. But what would you say on average between all the different investments? Um, and whatever they say, use that month, that that amount. Well, we've probably been under better than six percent. Okay, great. Okay, great. On on half a million dollars, that's thirty thousand dollars a year. Do you use that money to live on, or do you let it roll over and reinvest? And let them tell you how they let that, because that's the pool of money you want to you want to touch, and you only want to touch a small fraction of it. You're not going to touch anywhere near all of it. But when they tell you, and most people will tell you, they let they let it roll over. You say, then that's the only way to address this risk. We're going to take a, just a small piece of that money you're earning on the money you've got invested and put that toward a premium that's going to protect everything. It's going to protect your home, your cars, your other, your all your other investments, everything, by, and by just using the money that you've got invested to offset this, this risk, all right? Now, if you're using the Genworth uh, cost of care calculator, which I now that it's been updated, I strongly recommend. You can go to that cost of care calculator, put in their zip code, and it will show you the cost of long term care at home, at an assistant living facility, and at a nursing uh, a nursing home as of today. And then you can adjust the calculator so that it'll show you what is projected to be in the future. The average claimant. It's actually gone up a little bit. It's now 82 years old. So you can adjust the inflation bar on the calculator to show you what not only what the cost is today, but what the cost will be when they turn 82. So they'll, they'll see what kind of dollars they should be thinking about that they might need for care. Now, they don't need all of those dollars in the policy. And we'll talk about that in a second. But that that's the it, that's an important starting point for you to know what is and what isn't going to be affordable. They don't have a lot of uh, of liquidity and the like. You're going to have to design a plan a little bit different than if they do have um, lots of liquidity. So the more you can learn about their their finances, the better. And again, as an interviewer field underwriter, those are perfectly legitimate questions. So if you've established yourself as the interviewer field underwriter, which you should be doing by using the introduction talk at, when you start your, your interview, then um, you, are in a, you are in the proper position to ask those questions, right? Hey, Mark. Uh, yes, ma'am. What, um, when you're doing it, what inflation feature, what inflation number are you using these days for long-term care? I'm not, well, the, the the uh, calculator it, um, uh, makes an adjustment for inflation. I don't. Yeah, but I, don't the, you have to tell it what the number, what you want to use, like four percent or five percent or two percent? Don't you have to tell it that? No, it's built into the calculator. Oh, okay. You just it, it takes the cost today, and then you move it up, and it shows you what the cost will be 15, 20 years from now. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, Mark. Yes, sir. Do you have a, a fact finding form that you have these questions or questions laid out that someone who doesn't have as much experience? We have several ask? different ones, Stephen. I'd be interested in seeing yours if you have one. Well, well you'd have to um, open up my head, but. Um, oh. Well, that yes. can be arranged, Stephen. Yes, no, we we have a we have a fact finding uh, for under 65 and, and senior. North American has one. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of that. And I'll send it out to everyone. It's just, it's just having it. A, 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 now, we used to have, um, we didn't call it a fact finding form, an interview profile form is what we call it. But um, uh, again, it's just, it's for you to have a base for questions to start from. But all questions are designed to lead to them giving you answers that lead to additional questions. The more questions you can ask, the more deeper you can dive into learning about their finances, the more appreciated you're going to be for designing a plan that fits their needs. All right. Now, remember on the on the um, uh, Genworth calculator and the Genworth um, uh, cost of care uh, form, which again is at, it's on the microsites if you want them. It's it, you just hit Genworth cost of care and it'll come right up in your Google or whatever. Um, you can, everything will 
will will already be there by zip code, and then it'll break it down by those home care costs, uh, adult day care costs, um, assisted living costs, and um, nursing home costs. So, and it's going to vary. I mean, you go if you're going to be in New York City or Boston or Washington D.C. or Los Angeles, it's it's going to be you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month for some of those things. If you're going to be in in um, some place in the middle of Indiana, it's probably going to be like five thousand dollars. So yeah. again, you're looking to customize. But the beautiful part about this is you can customize to where they think they're going to be. If they're not retired yet and they're thinking that they're going to move closer to the kids when they do, then putting in the, the kids zip code will give them an idea of what cost of care is over there. Yeah, Mark, cost can of I care is a yes, sir. This is Bob. What, hey, what Bob. target audience are you looking for for the extended, uh, extended health plans? The average applicant is 82 years old. 70, 70, sorry, 62 years old, 62 years old. All right. So, so, uh, so a lot of these folks at 62 or prior to 62, they're still working. Yep. So they have, they have, they have, you know, a revenue stream. Right. So from my point of view, just thinking out loud, if somebody was asking me the questions that you're raising about what's your investments, what's your worth of your home and so on and so forth, right. I'd be a little turned off, you know, because well, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm going to be paying for this premium for the premium from my earnings, from my what I'm making, not what I have invested. You're you're paying for the premium presently, but when you retire, you're going to be put. You're going to be paying from what you're earning off your investments, aren't you? And your social security and your pension yeah. and then whatever else you have coming in. Yeah, but if you, if somebody's 55, you yeah. can talk about them thinking about what what it's going to cost them uh, 20 years from now. Well. Not only do you want them thinking about that, you want to use this GenWorth calculator to show them because, again, in 20 years with normal inflation, that cost is going to more than double. So you, look, you need to look and see what it is today and then look to see what it's going to be. The beauty of these extended care policies is they pay in cash. Other things might come and go and in or out of fashion, but what's never going to go out of fashion, at least in our lifetimes, is cash. And that's going to give them the freedom to be able to really get the kind of care they want, where they want, when you know, it, however they want to get it, and by whoever they want to give it to them. So, um, and don't think for a second that they're 55 that they haven't thought about what their income is going to be in retirement. It's a, it might be 10 years or 15 years away, but they know what they've saved up in their 401ks or their their. Um, uh, health savings accounts or whatever the however they're investing the money they have an idea of what their income is going to be and, and you, you you mentioned long-term care and then you mentioned extended care is is long-term care not extended care well first of all we've rebranded what was short-term home health care extended care i believe that these we call them extended care because that's what they are they're not they're not short-term care the way the name implies. They, you know, yes, they cover 360 days of coverage if you choose to go that way, but they they cover it up to four times because of the way the policies are built. So to say that they're only 360 days of coverage is a misnomer, especially when you get into bundling or combining policies so that you can um, uh, have something that's paying you during the restoration periods of those policies. So uh, the distinction we make is that extended care is a cash paying policy. Traditional long term care is a reimbursement policy. And frankly, I like my clients. I'll talk about it a little bit later in this call, but I, I like my clients to have some element of cash. Because that gives them the ultimate flexibility. So stay tuned, Bob. We're going to talk about that in a couple slides. All right. Okay. The one thing about what Bob was asking about the 55 year old. Yeah. So, so what you want to do at that point is you want to ask a 55 year old about their parents. Okay. And if they if their parents went through some catastrophic event that they didn't have enough money to to be put into a, a you know a facility or they just were able to they had to go into a Medicaid hospital. 
Absolutely right, Stephen. But I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm giving anybody the impression that this is how you start your interview. This isn't. Your interview is all about their health, their parents, their life, their, you know, their kids, everything that's around them, and what their wishes are for how they'd like to get care when the time comes. The first objective you have when you start an interview with someone is to learn why it was they came looking in the first place. Now, Bob or anybody else that's new on this, again, on the microsites, you will find a copy of the introduction talk that we teach during training. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you not only go get printed out or read it, and, 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 but internalize it. Now, before I completely review this program with you and answer any questions you might have, I want you to understand I'm not here today to sell you on the idea of getting extended care or supplemental care or whatever it is that they ask in Medicare, but coverage. My job is that of, a, of an interviewer field underwriter. I'm going to ask questions about your health and finances. At the end of this, you're going to be able to make two decisions. One, does this sound like something you think is right for you and you can benefit from? And two, does it sound like it's affordable? If you can answer yes to both those questions, then I'm going to suggest we proceed to making the application to find out if you can get accepted and approved. Now, as we go through this, you might find that you think of other people who might also have a need for this kind of coverage. And I would sure appreciate if you shared their names with me because that's how I've built my practice from the referrals I've gotten from my, from my clients. But at this point, I have put together a slide deck so that you can, you can see the questions about, again, about your health and let's get right into it. And then you go right into your interview. Your interview Mark. should always start with a personal, a short personal story about why you got into the business. I got into the business because of my grandmother, and then became and then became my father. Grand, grandmother was in a nursing home. It was bothering her more uh, uh, mentally than anything that was wrong with her physically, that she was spending all her money at that nursing home. My father later on got Alzheimer's. My mother had gotten a policy on him, and she knew she could afford the cost of his care. He had it for six years. She kept him at home the whole time because she had the cash from the policy. He would go to adult daycare to an adult daycare center during the day, but then he'd uh, come home at night. The last six months of his life, he was starting to hallucinate a lot, and so she had to bring in help. She collected $225,000 in benefits out of that policy, but only spent $65,000 on his care. So she was able to take the rest of the cash, put it into investments, and during that time, that money more than doubled. She ended up in a much better place financially because she had a cash paying policy. That's why I'm a big fan of cash. That's my story. You need to come up with one of yours, make it short and sweet because the whole purpose of that is to simply ask this question. Have you ever had any experience being a caregiver or knowing of someone who needed long-term care? And let them talk because that's the reason that they are that they came to you in the first place. And you want to bring that thought front and center. Let them talk. Mark. Yes, go ahead. Mark. Yes, ma'am. Then after that discussion you're talking about, don't forget the key agreement. So you recognize, Mr. Jones, that something could happen that you might need long-term care, correct? Yes. Okay. You are now hearing from Alita Weiner. Alita is one of the premier long-term care trainers in the history of this profession. Um, she trained at Genworth for many, many years, and, and I love when she reminds us of getting back to the fundamentals. And what she just said is key. But we're going to find ways, by the way, to take advantage of, of, of Alita's uh, experience in this business. And she's always generous in sharing anyway. But I want you to understand that came from a very uh, credible source. So thank you, Alita, for, for sharing. Um, You're welcome. Uh, so, again, the purpose of, in the beginning is to establish yourself as an interviewer, field underwriter, and then to actually prove it by asking questions about their health. And again, if you don't have our slide deck, that's on the microsites, too. You can see that's the way that the interview unfolds. You ask questions about their, their family, their, 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 you know, what their experiences have been, and then you get into their health and you qualify them as to whether or not, you know, what direction you should drive them. Are they a candidate for a hybrid? Are they a candidate for traditional? Are they a candidate for 
extended care? Are they a candidate for something else? You need to find out about their lives and what their desires are so you know what to recommend. All right. Mark, Mark where do you find the microsite? So on the uh, uh, agent portal, go to the agent website and you'll see each channel has a, a microsite. Ours is the supplemental channel and there's listed all the training materials that we that we uh, share during our basic training, as well as all the links to the carriers and everything else. And every time we have a new update, it goes on the microsite. Um, uh, Stephen, you have your own microsite, don't you? Stephen, he's on mute. I don't know. Steve, I believe Stephen has a, his own microsite on Manhattan Life Products alone, but you can go there. But if you go to ours, you'll find that it'll cover all the carriers. So it's, mine is being under construction. Yours is under construction. Yes. Okay. Sort of like the roads around Atlanta, always under construction. That's correct. Okay. All right. So my point to you is, you need to get an insight only after you've learned about their health. You've shared with them some things they might find valuable, like how Medicare works, how Medicaid works, how how um, the whole system works. And that's all on those slide decks if you, you see them there. And you're leading up to the question of, does long-term care insurance sound like something they think they can benefit from if they can qualify for it? They answer yes, and you ask them why. Now, let me go back for a second. You've, you've got to establish without ever talking about a product or talking about a price, that this is the best solution for them. They only have three choices. They can self-insure, they can impoverish themselves and transfer the risk to a to Medicaid, Medicaid or, they, or the government, I should say, or they can transfer the risk to a multi-billion dollar insurance company with lots of experience doing this. That's their three choices. And at the at about halfway through your interview, you need to ask them. Now that you've learned more about how this works, does long-term care insurance sound like something you think you can benefit from if you can qualify for it? It, it, it is something they have to qualify for, so you, you you need to use that because that will help them sell themselves to you. All right, so please um, get yourself into a, a pattern, a rhythm of how you're going to approach your clients and. And try to lead to that question. When they say yes, long-term care insurance sounds like the best solution for me, you've got to ask why. And let them talk. Because that why is the reason they're going to move forward to make an application. That's the secret right there. Once they start to answer you why, you can assume they're going to make an application because they just told you. You showed them the three choices. They decided transferring the risk made the most sense. Now you, you asked them why. They told you. So there's no reason why you can't assume they're going to apply to see if they can get accepted. All right. That's when you talk about the money. You still haven't shown them a price or a product, but that's when you talk about the money because you want to learn how to design that plan to help them get something that makes financial sense to them, is affordable for them, but at the same time provides them with an assurance, the peace of mind of knowing that if they do run into this problem, they've got a, a way to address it. Okay, right? I've gone off script here a lot, but I wanna make sure everybody's getting that. And again, um, we're, we're gonna have another training before the end of this month. And uh, if you if you wanna come to it, we'll make sure the invitation goes out and you'll be able to attend as well. All right. So here's some rules that are current for today. Co-insuring the risk is the norm. Most of your clients have income coming in from multiple sources, pensions, social security, earnings off investments, um, uh, rent off of property that they might own, and a slew of other ways that they might be getting money every month. Your aim as an interviewer field underwriter is to show them that you're not interested in trying to spend all their money. You're interested in trying to find them the plan that's going to deliver the most value for the least amount of money. So even if, the, and you'll come in to come across prospects who will say to you, well, I want the very best of the very best. Okay. 
but you should be saying, let's use your money in a smart way and utilize the fact that even if you're living in a facility as opposed to at home, you're still going to have money coming in. So how can we use that to keep the cost of your insurance as low as possible? If they insist that they want the, 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 the Rolls Royce of plants, fine, you're not going to talk them out of it. But but the idea is to let them tell that to you, not you try to sell that to them. Okay, so use their sources of income, learn about their how how their finances work, right? What their investments are. I always assume a five percent return on investment. It's been more than that these last few years. I let them tell me it's more, but then I say, let me be. Let's be conservative about it and say you average five percent. So they have a half a million dollars. They got twenty five thousand dollars a year coming in in interest off of, of, of their savings or earnings off their investments, all right? And th that's more, way more than they're gonna be, need to, um, uh, you know, put toward a plan. I mean, it's gonna be a tiny fraction of that. When you're looking at the calculator, the, the gen work cost to care calculator, right? You're, you're looking at the present cost. And until you move the, needle up that will adjust it to the time they're age 80 or 82 to show them what the cost will be when they probably will need it and the, and the monies are going to close to double um that's when you can start to make the decision where to target the cost of the premium so if it's five thousand dollars a month now and when they're 82 it's going to be ten thousand dollars a month for that same care you can then design a plan that's in that $5,000, $6,000 range, knowing that they're still gonna be covered 20 years from now because they have all these other income sources. The social security is gonna keep paying whether they're living at home or living in the facility or living in the assisted living facility, uh, you know, uh, unit. So again, try, don't try to eat the whole elephant. Just try to make sure they have enough Having an insurance plan is going to give them so much more clout when it comes to going to a facility or needing home care or a care of any kind, simply because when you have an insurance policy, you are a private pay client. And the private pay client, the client who has the ability to pay, especially by using an insur insurance company's proceeds, are the most favored clients of anybody in the long term care business, whether it be home care. Uh, assisted living or or nursing home because they're not taking your savings those places they're taking the money that your um your uh, uh policy is paying and that's that's what they want more than anything else is a way to pay that and not see their life savings disappearing in front of their eyes here's another this is a this is a rule that's been around for a while and it's not scientific but it's if you're thinking about what range should I be in when I'm designing a plan, there's a thing called the 1% rule. So if they have a half a million dollars in savings, you should say to yourself, okay, 1% of that is $5,000. If I can keep the premium around that amount, that's probably not gonna be objectionable in any way and affordability is not gonna become an issue. So that doesn't mean you need to design to the entire $5,000. I mean, if they have $2 million, you know, then the 1% is going to be $20,000. And $20,000 plans are not usually, usually the case. So at least not in, um, uh, in, in the form of an extended care or long-term care policy. I don't know what happens when you bundle everything together. Stephen can talk to better than that. But uh, Stephen, your average premium doesn't come anywhere close to 20 grand, does it, with the bundles? No. No. So... My point to you is if you use the 1% rule, you'll know you're safe, okay? Just another side tip on how you should be designing plans. Okay, so this is what I wanted to revisit with you just today is getting back to these kind of fundamentals. And again, if you've got questions, feel free to run them down. You can ask me at the end. I just wanna, I wanted to make sure we revisited some of this stuff because no matter how many times you hear it, every time you hear it, you seem to hear something new, okay? couple things. You're not out there alone. I'm glad Stephen's here because when it comes to the Manhattan Life products, you know, you, you not only can you go to me, but you can go to him. He's the, he's the resident expert on that. Um, if you need help, ask. 
you know, and you also have the the regional um, the representatives from the different carriers that you can go to. There's no shortage of people you can't tap into if you need help. Good morning, this is Judy Fetters. Hello, Judy Fetters. We're saying good morning to you too. Try to click on your mute button if you could, Judy. Um, good morning, are you? Okay, I guess you can. Let me see if I can mute her. Where are you, Judy? Oh, here it is. All right. I don't see Judy. Do you see Judy? Do you see Judy like I need Judy? <laughs> All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Looking for the people that are on the call. Start this window. Here we go. Let's see. There we go. Judy, Judy, Judy. Bob, I'm muting you. You can always unmute. Alita, I'm doing the same, but you you can always unmute. Um, Candy, thank you. Is muted. Judy, there she is. All right, I'm muting Judy. You can unmute when you come back, Judy. Okay, let's go back to sharing the screen. Oh, it says we are still sharing. You're still seeing my slide deck, Alita, unmute if you're at the yes. end. Okay, yes. good. Okay, let's go back to the sleep. Okay. Before you ever get on a call with a client, you should be looking at different plans of care just to understand what the cost range would be. So you know their age, if you know their birth dates, you know their age, you know where they're living. Uh, that'll tell you a lot about what their economics might be. You can look up the value of their house if you have their address on Zillow or any of these other programs that are out there so you can get a sense about them. But you should do pre interview work by getting an idea of the ballpark of what kind of recommendations are going to lead to what kind of premium. And you, plan, and you want to plan or, or, you know, different plan designs so you can pivot to them once you have a sense of what where you need to be when you go to present uh, the actual product and the cost of that product. So make sure you know that in advance. All right. Don't try to design a plan with the client from scratch. Already, you should already know some uh, some of the parameters that you're going to be looking toward and have them ready to present. They're looking to you to help them design the, the most practical, valuable plan. And the they're, they're going to go in the direction you drive them. So you don't want to be starting from point zero. You want to have an idea in your head with what kind of plan you want to design. And now, once you learn more information from them from the interview, be able to adjust to making recommendations based on the information they shared with you. Okay. Anybody have any questions about plan design in today's world and why it's important to design for affordability? Okay, let's continue. Oh, by the way, this is an extra bonus. You'll see it on the uh, on the um, recording. I came across while I was going back on my archives of things to talk about here, a Golden Care webinar that was about a year and a half, two years ago, all about plan design. And it, it has some really good stuff in it. And they too hit on affordability. Don't work for me, but that's okay. They, they hit on uh, affordability and it was a good webinar and it was recorded. So I included that recording on the email you're going to get right after this call with the recording of this call, you'll also have the email with the recording of this of this uh, webinar that Golden Care did a couple of years ago. Okay, you're gonna get a bunch of recordings this year, this this particular seminar from this, from this uh, webinar that we're doing, um, as some of our carriers have also recorded some things for you to listen to. So we'll get into that. Before we go further, I wanna remind everybody, next Wednesday, the 10th. Alyssa De La Cruz, who was our guest last week from Nationwide, is going to be doing a deep dive into the Nationwide Care Matters portfolio. Here was the invitation that was sent to you, and I'll send it to you again this week. You've got to register. I registered just now before the call. So you can click on this link and you register. 
It's going to be about an hour on just the Care Matter products. The Care Matter products have become the most popular hybrid product on the marketplace today, especially this new program they came out with called Care Matters Together. You heard about it last week, but you need to find out the intricate details of it. Plan to attend this training April 10th at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 Eastern. Um, and uh, it'll just be Alyssa and all of you. I'll be I'll be listening, but it'll be her webinar. And um, uh, you'll learn all about this product. Again, uh, it's a product that pays in cash. And once you say that, you've got my full attention because to me, that's a key component in how you should be addressing this risk. That's why I also like the extended care policies because they all pay in cash. Right. So put that down on your calendars, April 10th, 11 Eastern. Right. And make sure you go to this link and register for it when you get the email following this call. Two weeks ago, we heard from this gentleman, Mike Gatorma. Mike was kind enough to try to um, provide a training on the Wellaby products, which used to be Medico. These are these. This is the really the newest player in the extended care market because um, because of this name change and the like that they've gone through and how they've upgraded the product. The Wellaby product pays the most amount of money per day of any carrier in the short-term care business. That will give you up to $500 a day, where the other products pay $400 a day as a max or $300 a day as a max. The Wellaby will pay you $500 a day for facility care, and I think it's uh, $300 a day for home care. So you wanna learn about this product. Well, if you remember, Mike tried to share all his information with us, and he was in a hotel in Colorado Springs at the time, and the internet went out at the hotel. So Michael went home and he recorded the entire webinar just for you, right? Did a video recording, here's the link for it. When you get the email following this call, you'll click on the link. I highly suggest you listen to this. You take the time to, to learn about this because again, this, this is the premier plan in the sense of getting you the most amount of money, right? And you wanna, uh, know all that you can know about it. It's also a place for you to shine because it's be because they're so new and rolling this out. Um, you will rapidly go to the top of their list as a top producer that will get all kinds of additional perks because you do. Um, and so you want here's a way for you to make a real splash for your career this way in doing that. So um, listen to this recording now. I'm trying to get rid of this. So no. That kid popped up on my screen. All right, so now follow the directions. Just click on the link. You'll be fine again. It'll be with the recordings with this with this webinar. But here's the other reason why I think you need to learn it. As I shared with you, I've been asking the carriers to put together a contest that leads up to our meeting in uh, Frisco at the Star, Frisco, uh, July 15th and 16th. Okay. They put together a contest just for us around this. Well, actually, this is not just for us. You're, any, everyone's eligible to, to win this money, but, but this is a great way for you to offset the cost to attend. And I mean everything about attending because with very little effort here, you can have more than enough money that will cover your air if you're flying in or your gas if you're, if you're driving in and your hotel cost while you're there. All their food and everything else will be covered by us uh, when you come. So um, if, you, if you're looking for a way to offset your costs to attend, here's a contest that will help you do that. You write five qualifying apps between now and the end of June. You get $500, and then you get an extra $100 for every app thereafter. Um, you, get, you write three qualifying apps equal $850 and an extra $150 per app if you're writing Medicare supplement with them. And, and all of the product, doesn't matter what the product is, doesn't have to be extended care. Uh, it all counts toward the monies that you can earn toward help offsetting your costs to attend the conference and uh, pocket money as well. They also, and I included his email, he attached a short-term care calculator that he created so that it helps you with the plan design. It, again, it'll be attached. Uh, I highly recommend you open it and take a look at it. 
these tools mean nothing if you're not going to use them. So you have a new product, you have a product that can pay more money, you have a product that you can win um, or qualify for cash off of and offset your trip to attend the the uh, agents conference in at, in Frisco at the Star here, uh, July 15th and 16th. Okay. For those of you, by the way, that have still not appointed with Nationwide, make a point to go to this link and get appointed. It's on the portal now. If you go to our website on the portal, you'll see it. Um, if you go to get contracted, you'll see the Nationwide link is there now, but here's the link that goes directly to the paperwork you need to get appointed. Get appointed with Nationwide in advance of the training. You don't want to get all dressed up and be ready to go help people and then not be able to do so because you didn't request the appointment. So go to the agent portal or come to this link that I'm that will be with the recording and and uh, get yourself appointed now because it takes a few a few, few days to a few weeks to get done. So you want to be ahead of that. Okay. Let's call off script and have a have a conversation. I have a new lead opportunity that's come our way, but I want your input on it before we go further. I've been approached by an organization that has an enormous quantity of worksite leads. These are leads that are sold to people at their place of work, uh, usually through the website of that work where they go to, to pick out their benefits. Um, it's a different kind of sale because it's more of an enrollment than it is an interview like we do with with people that you know come to us uh, as individuals. These are people who are mostly signing up because their work has said that we're now offering long term care uh, or your ability to get long term care as part of uh, our benefits program. Right. With this agreement will come some carriers we don't presently have. And again, I pride myself on us having all of them, but this will bring to to our ability to sell products that or offer products that um, are for all intents and purposes guaranteed issue. In other words, everyone will health qualify. So you don't the the, the the employers like to have a product where they can say it's guaranteed issue so they don't have to deal with the declines and uh, the health issues of their employees. So uh, they, they, they like when you, we offer a plan that offers that kind of coverage. Problem with that is it's usually not adequate enough. It'll give you up to uh, the most I know of is $150,000 of benefits, but most are under 100,000 in benefits. And so most LTC or extended care specialists don't think that's adequate enough coverage, but it's certainly a starting place. And the uh, working with the employees under the endorsement of the of the place they work business at is much more likely to get them to take action and and do something to uh, put a plan in place. You, but you're and again, you're enrolling. When you get these people on the phone, you're basically going to say, OK, I've got this is this is the carrier that the your employer endorses. Here's three different plans. Good, better, best. Which one do you think is the best fit for you? And you're into taking the paperwork to enroll them, knowing that you're going to place 100% of that business, unless the client changes their mind, you're going to be able to get them qualified for those policies. These plans pay considerably lower commissions. Right? It's going to vary by carriers. I'm not going to give you specific numbers, but it's usually like at least half, 50% less than what you're what you're probably earning off these policies now, but you more than make that up in volume. I know of an organization I used to run that sold five million dollars of premium in one day to Facebook. So even though you're getting paid less, you're getting you're getting a lot more and you're qualifying for these trips and other things that the carriers offer because you're you're hitting those higher numbers. But again, you get paid on what you place and the fact that you place all this that's um, uh, that, that can lead to a whole lot of good stuff. I mean, the average traditional long term care policy is lucky to place in the 50 to 60 percent range. This is, you're going to place 100 percent of it. But again, different kind of approach. What it does do is open the door for you to bundle other policies. 
Now that you've helped them with their long-term care risk, there's no reason why you can't identify, uh, introduce to them uh, additional vision and, and hearing insurance or uh, hospital indemnity insurance or cancer insurance or final expense and on and on and on, right? Is there interest in these kind of leads? I don't want to go here and then tell them that we don't have anybody that wants to work these kind of leads. I do. Okay, I got a strong I do from Sharon. Anybody else have any strong feelings one way or the other? Yes, no, I'd like to hear them. You can always use leads. <laughs> you can always use leads. Who said that, Confucius? You can always yeah, use leads. Scott. Yeah, no, I know it's Scott, but I'm saying it sounds like the <laughs> words of wisdom brought down from, from the mountains, you know? Short, you can sweet, always use leads, right? Oh, short, yeah, short, sweet, and simple. Short, sweet, and simple. Okay. All right. So anybody, anybody have any objections to these kind of leads? I'd like to hear what those are. I don't know what they would be, but I'd like to hear them so I don't go into this blind. Because once I make a commitment Mark, to I'm them, I'm just curious about them. I don't know enough about it yet, but I'm curious about them. It's Candy. It's Candy. Yeah, I know. I recognize your voice, Candy. Um, okay, good. Let me find out more about it. There, you people know better than myself, but there's a Medicarian show this week, this coming week in Las Vegas, and that's where all these people are. And when he gets back from the show, I will talk to him at the end of next week and get more information about how we get involved. But I didn't want to proceed with doing all that and make promises to him unless I thought there was strong interest out there. And what I'm hearing is we're interested to learn more. Okay. Hey, so, Mark. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Is this program where they just hand you the name of the contact at the company and then you go in and sell the group plan or no? no. OK, no. OK, this is a this is a and, and a lot of companies. They don't actually subsidize the the program or anything. They just make it available to their employees. And so they go to their websites, uh, the employee's website, and they see that as listed as some of the products they can. And, but then they strongly encourage them to sign up. Okay. So those so will be individual you, you'll be talking to about their company recommending that they look at a long-term care or an extended care. Because look, it helps them too. If you know, if they, if, if you're going to take time off because you have to take care of your mom and now you have... Um, uh, a way to have care for yourself or have a policy that will cover yourself that's going to be it's going to be advantageous to them so this is a win-win for everyone and everyone that does it they're not always crazy about the coverage but they, they, they specialists that do it but they sure love the fact that they can write this kind of volume of business is the employer throwing any money at this most times not, but sometimes they do. And if they do, it's minimal. It's like, you know, we'll pay the first 50 bucks or something like that. Okay. We'll let you know when that's the case. It'll vary from group to group. They have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different associations and groups that they, they do this with. Okay. Let me let me get more about it. I just wanted to take your temperature on it first. Okay. Talking about need programs. The one and only Miss Sharon Luker, who you just heard from, Cindy Johnson, who uh, I don't I think she's on the call, but she can't. She's she's uh, in a meet. She's at a dental appointment or something like that. Anyway, she she we can't hear her. And Raymond Levine, who's on as well, started on the new lead program that we're doing with Lead Concepts. We've got two others that are going to start this coming week. But just in the first week, actually in the first three days, this is the number of leads each of them got. So the signs coming out of the box are pretty encouraging that uh, we're going to get a decent volume of leads. Now, the challenge right now has been getting in touch with those people once they come. And I did learn some things about these leads, so I'm going to share it with all of you so because all of you can learn lessons um, that, that these three brave, courageous pioneers who went into this lead program are learning. You can learn along with them. Um, but again, they have... We're going to keep it on the test phase for now, but you can you can um, once you hear the numbers you want, tell me when you want to participate. And I'll put you on the wait list. So when we open it up, you'll be able to get to these leads, too. All right. Um, one of the I'm going to share with you the lesson. I'm sorry. I'm going to share with you the lesson 
in a couple of slides. This is a couple of pieces of news I wanted to make sure you you heard about. Manhattan Life is now has their home healthcare product now approved in in Indiana. So if any of you have clients in Indiana, this is the time to go back and say, hey, I know when we spoke, um, you weren't certain, you weren't sure, uh, your health didn't let you qualify, you got declined or whatever for the traditional long-term care. Well, now I've got a product that I can help you with. And Indiana has always been a great state for th these kinds of, uh, of um, new products coming in because they're one of the four original partnership states. The people there have been well educated on why they need long term care. If they got declined or rated, or they've experienced the rate increase, now that you can offer them home health care select in in the in the Indiana marketplace, this is a gold mine waiting to be uh, discovered. So, if you if you do business in Indiana, go back to your clients there. There'll be an insert attached. You'll hear all about how the program works uh, through Manhattan Life. Okay. Here's some news from the carriers themselves. Every week, Moo comes out with what they call their Moo Express and their Moo Focus. It'll be attached. Inside the Moo newsletter, there's always a section on long-term care. It changes every week. So understanding the limited duration inflation options is one of the um, uh, articles they have there this week. And enforce long-term care rate adjustments are that are going to go into effect in June for on the Moo products is also listed. Why is that so important? Guys, all these rate increases are a gold mine of opportunity for all of you. I sold again this last week two more people that had gotten rate increases and from Genworth and and said what, Mark, what can I do? I mean, they're saying that they're going to raise the rates as much as 600% over the next few years. I can't afford to do that. Well, nobody that gets a rate increase has to accept the rate increase. They can freeze the benefits in their policy right where it's at. And they can keep the policy intact with all the benefits that's accrued to date. And they can, most of the time, by just simply removing the inflation rider that was in that original policy, they can lower their premium below where it was before this it, um, rate increase was suggested. And now you have found money that you can use to supplement what they already have with an extended care policy. I have found that this has worked like a charm. Every time I run into a client, I say, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to freeze your benefits. You've already seen your daily benefit increase from a um, two hundred dollars a day to three hundred and eighty dollars a day. So we're going to freeze it at that. Take out the inflation, leave it at, so we know we got the three hundred and eighty dollars a day and all the other perks that come with that policy. But we're going to take the savings by taking that compound interest rate up and use it toward getting you a cash policy, because that Genware policy is never going to pay cash. So now you give them an extended care policy that pays cash on top of the Genworth policy. They've got more money coming in. They've got cash so they can hire their relatives or the next door neighbor or whoever they want to uh, use it with. They start with their home care because that's where most people start. And you've given them more and better coverage for the same amount of money. So when a, when a carrier tells you in advance they're about to raise rates, that's a heads up for you to get ahead of this so that before they get that letter from the carrier saying that they're going to raise rates, you've already have an opportunity to offer a solution that delivers more value to them. So when I used to, you know, uh, cringe every time I heard about a carrier talking about raising rates, now it's like, bring it on. Because I know I can help them with more coverage and not have to spend more money. And you get paid first year commissions Mark? all over again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. I've been doing this with Genworth, and now I'm just starting with the mutual of Omaha rate increases. Good. And everybody should be aware once they get into this that mutual of Omaha isn't really good about saying what the benefits will be at the quote. In other words, they give them one choice to reduce their premium, but they don't yeah, give multiple choices like okay. Genworth does. 
That's even so better. That's why they, they, you they need you. You have to go back and ask for an individualized quote. And even then they just say, this is the premium, but it doesn't say what the benefits are. So I have to call them back this morning to say, what does that reduced premium cover in terms of benefits? So just right. so other people know. Very good. Thank you for sharing, Alita. And that's how we learn things. And that's why you want to be part of an organization like ours, so you can hear about the experience of others and pick up on the best practices. Again, when my client did that this week, they saved $240 a month off their premium. We were able to use that $240 to give them a, a really robust extended care program. So um, that would pay them in cash. So, so again, these are opportunities. You're their expert. You're their advocate. You're the you're their go-to person. They don't see Moo as the go-to company. That's that's the company that you might have recommended to them, or Genworth, or Hancock, or Prudential, or or whoever else they might have gotten their long-term care from. But they want to. They want someone that's going to care about them and give them the kind of cutting-edge advice because these programs weren't even available to them. And they've never been positioned as a way to offset the cost of of uh, long term care. So you can be a real hero if you get ahead of the the curve with them before they even get the notice from the carrier because you know they're about to experience these rate increases. All right? You read this rate adjustment; and it'll list the the series of products that they're going to raise rates on. So in the, in the years those products were issued, all of them go back. A good 15, 10, 15 years, they're not raising rates on existing products. These are all um, products that have been enforced for quite a while. Okay. All right. Last week, I talked about starting this idea where you guys could share ideas from the field that I then we could share with everyone. All right. That was the whole idea. And we were, we were, I was happy to have Paul Rothman and Cindy Johnson both come up with ideas and I shared them with you. You want to you want to hear what they are? Go back to last week's recording. Oh, by the way, all the recordings are on those microsites too, Bob. So you can find out past uh, webinars. This week, it was actually one of our vendors who sent me the idea, and that's the idea I was referring to just a, a few minutes ago uh, when I was talking about new lead programs, um, not the worksite lead program, the worksite, the program that both both Sharon and uh, uh, Cindy and uh, Ray are in right now, and a couple more are going to be coming in this coming week. So this this actually comes from a lead vendor, then that's all they do is provide leads. So you can take this as a really good counsel and advice. What they've learned is that, first of all, under this new lead program, those people are getting those leads immediately as they respond. So they're getting them in real time. And still frustrating because they're calling them usually, usually within minutes of when they respond it, and they're not getting them to answer the phone. That's because everybody screens their calls. And so I'm sure you do too. You're not answering calls from people you don't know or people you think are calling to sell you something. And so neither do they. But here's something that they've tried with their other, they literally put out tens of thousands of leads every week from the people that have been working with them for a while. They've had great luck with texting the lead first and saying, hi, I just got a, an inquiry from you about um, some more information on extended care or long-term care or whatever the, the inquiry, it'll be specific as to where you came from. And I just wanted you to know that I would be giving you a call so that when you see my name, on your caller ID, you, you, you'll know it's about this, this program that you just asked about. So uh, by doing that, I didn't realize this. So when I say we learn something new every time. When you text them like that, it puts your information in their phone. So now when you call them, it should come up with your name or the, the uh, your, your agency's name. So like in Sharon's case, it'll come up LTC planning consultants, right, Sharon? So it'll come up with the name because it's now in their phone because you texted them. I didn't know that was true until they just shared this with me. So that's one of the ways to help maybe get phone answered more quickly if you text them first, right? We we I, always I have a. What's that? 
Yeah. Oh, just a question about, because I know like on the Medicare side, we always have to get permission to text and permission to call and all of that. Doesn't Is exist that on the extended care side. Okay. Okay. So you're good. You're good to go. Okay. Hey, Mark. Yes, ma'am. The only comment I'm going to make on that, and I I need to do this, is if you still, like currently I have my office number, which happens to be a landline, so I don't text from the landline. I text from my personal phone, so it will show up. I don't even know if there's a name that comes off my personal phone. So I, think I don't know you either. You should probably test it and experiment, see what happens. Right. You So you need to coordinate all your, you know, phone stuff so that it happens. Yeah. Well, you know, definitely test around and play around with it. I don't know, but I know this, it won't hurt. Again, guys, I've had plenty of, not plenty, a, a fair amount of agents who have gone to texting as the only way they book appointments. It's easy to ignore a call. call. It's even... Um, uh, pretty easy to ignore an email, but it seems to be almost impossible for most people to avoid a or to ignore a text. So our formula has always been you get a lead, you email them, you in your email, you have a link so they can set a time to meet with you with you. you know, they have your appointment link that you should have uh, through Calendly or um, acuity scheduling or whoever you decide you're going to use, they you put that in in the email that goes out to them. Then it, it, if they don't respond, which most of them won't right away, you call them. You're not going to reach them. They're screening their calls. Once in a while, somebody will pick up, but that's rare. You're when when they um, when you text them, right? You say, hey. I just left you a voicemail. If you, I, in there, I said I sent a new email to you. In there is a link. If you click on it, you can let me know the best time. We can spend five minutes to talk about your health. That's it. Short, sweet, it's five minutes about your health. That's all you want to talk about. You don't want to talk products or anything else. Doesn't You just want to make sure they know it's going to be a short talk so you can learn more about their health so they can understand how this process works and keep that as simple as possible. Okay. Now, he took a look at the leads, by the way, for the three of you that are on the program, and the average age is in the early 70s at the moment. We're going to see uh, what we can do to tweak that a little bit. But again, these products can be sold up through age 89, so there's nothing wrong with somebody in the, their early or even late 70s because those people have no other choices but to get a plan like this. And they're grateful that you're bringing this to their attention. So again, that's the best bullet you see here in, from him in red. Uh, he recommends that you text the prospects first so that we change the formula. So when you get the lead now, instead of emailing them, text them saying, hey, this is this is uh, Sharon. I just got an inquiry from you about more information. I'm going to be the one, I'm in the LT, the, the uh, Extended care solution specialist that's going to be helping you with this. Here's my name in case you see it. I'll be calling you. I just need to ask you five minutes about five minutes of questions on your health. That's it. You just send that out so they know there's some familiarity. So when they see it and they're still interested in getting those questions answered, maybe they'll answer the phone when you call. Right. And then um, follow up that way. You'll be in, you'll be in, uh, I, I think it's worth testing, is what I'm saying to you. So, again, I'm going to continue to try to get these kinds of, of lessons that these lead vendors learn because why not, Why shouldn't we take advantage of the fact that they're helping hundreds of other agents as well and finding out what's, what's working? This sounds like a good idea to me. So I'm sharing it with all of you. And we're thanking them for sharing it with you. All right. Just a reminder, it is now April. There's no more half-price sale like there was in March on the conference. We are leading as a unit, as a group, over the other six, we are leading in um, uh, agents signed up to attend. I'm very proud of the fact that so many of you have taken action. But don't let anybody, don't let grass grow under your feet when it comes to this. April has brought on a flash sale. Again, the company doesn't make money off of your, uh, your, off your uh 
uh, uh, buying a ticket to attend the conference. That they, they they offset the cost of the conference through the sponsors. All right. The purpose of charging you a fee is simply to make sure that you're going to show up. Now, I share that with you because I want you to understand that that that's why we can get them. We people like Stephen and myself can lobby them to um, uh, offer discounts to you to attend. In the month of April, any one of you can attend. The prices have gone up to their normal level, but any one of you can attend as a VIP at half the cost. So you go on the link that you see there, you register, and then they will show you exactly how uh, you'll get reimbursed half the price uh, as an expense so that it doesn't count as income toward you. All right. If you haven't already done so, go to the, our Facebook page, that link below, and keep up with what's going on. Again, there's about 1,300 people on that Facebook page. All of them are affiliated with NAIS. All kinds of good sales scenarios appear all the time. People asking questions all about products I don't know anything about, and I learn from it every time I, I look at it. But if you haven't made a habit of the check-in with the Facebook page, you know, register. You have to be invited. But you, you register that you want to be invited to the private closed page and they'll, they'll send you an invitation and then you'll have access. Um, again, also on the on the agent portal, there's a link that says conference. You click on it and you can register for the conference. I don't know what's going to happen after April, so I would take advantage of the fact that you can attend for 50 percent off the uh, registration rate uh, by going and get the VIP tickets of 50 percent off. All right, so take full advantage of that. All right, um, that's that's was the that was that was uh, March's incentive. We will have a call tomorrow. Uh, we're, I like the fact that our attendance is growing. It's in the morning. It's now nine o'clock. It's not eight thirty Eastern time, so nine o'clock. It's usually about a half hour long, unless you drive it longer. It's not my call. It's your call. You decide the agenda. You bring up the topics. You decide what problems and challenges you're having, and everybody helps everybody um, uh, solve their issues. So if you're up tomorrow morning before nine Eastern, eight Central, please dial in. S same link as today. You don't have to dial. Just click on the same link as today, and you'll be part of tomorrow's call. All right, um, guys, I, this upsets me, but I'm I'm going to contain my upset at this. I need you to share with me the business you're writing before these calls begin each week. I have no place to go see because you send them to the carriers. What business was submitted? I know I submitted eighteen hundred and eighty dollars on an OmniFlex policy off that as a um, the additional coverage I gave to the people that already had the Genworth policy. But I want to celebrate all of you. And it frustrates me when I can't get that. So I need you to send it to me, all right? You all have a source of sales form. If you don't, it's on the microsites too. But you have, just send it to me so I know, so I can celebrate you. Anybody write business last week that I don't know about yet? Because I would love to celebrate you. Speak up. No? Yes? Oh, come on. People broke business. Oh. You're being shy. Okay. Well, again, don't leave me out here alone. Please send me your business. I, I love to see dozens of names. And I know for a fact, if I go back, you're going to tell me about all kinds of different business you wrote. It doesn't have to be extended care. It could be any of the supplemental products. You sold it through a Medicare client. I want to hear about it because that's what we're all about, helping people build a package that's going to give them the best coverage for the least amount of money. Okay. Look at this. Uh, it's snowing. Okay, it's somebody's snowing. talking in the background. All right. Um, anybody have any observations of their own from the field? Anybody see anything last week that they want to share? No? Yes? Alita, I just see Sharon? more and more people needing help. You see more and more people needing help. You should. Guys, this is becoming, this is a problem that's only growing. You can't be in a better place. Again, more than 10,000 people every day. Hey, let's, we gotta go. let me go mute somebody that should be muted here. Um, there we go. Well, 
they, it seems like they muted themselves. So let me go I got back a question. to the slides. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Um, as far as is anybody doing any, any having any luck with like Facebook or LinkedIn marketing? Well, that's what they they're doing from that that lead concepts program is what they're doing is Facebook. They're advertising on Facebook. Are anybody here though having doing any specific social networking? And what are you doing and what's your experience? Nobody? Nobody's going on LinkedIn or or TikTok or Instagram or X or Meta or what well Meta is Facebook. No? Well, let's make that for and one of the issues we talk about tomorrow, because I don't understand that. All of you should have uh, your own websites. Just I got you know we arrange for you to get one for free. If you don't have your own website, compliments of of us and Back Nine, and I don't know why you wouldn't be using the social networks to get the word out there. And if you have people that are affiliated with you on your page or subscribe to your pages, why you're not? Encouraging that and posting articles all the time that we share with you all about, you know, you being the epicenter for all things long term care solutions wise. So you you need to be you make sure that you, you're doing that. Let's talk about that on tomorrow's call. OK, I promised you we're going to do this in two parts. Let's get into it. All right. These are the things you should know to make the most out of your life. Now, I come to this in a sort of odd way. I, for over the last, since the beginning of the year in particular, I've had a series of people in my life who I know have um, uh, gotten to the point where um, they can see that the end of their life is not that far away. And I've watched how many different people have reacted to that. First off, uh, no one gets out of this life alive. We all know that. We say that, we understand it, but we don't think about it until it start, starts to happen to someone we know or someone we love or someone that uh, we've been friends with for a long time and uh, and it really impacts us at home. So I'm going to start today with 10 things. This is number one. No one gets out of this life alive. And then next week, I'm going to sit, share with you 10 more. Um, all life comes to an end. I know nobody I know lives forever. We only have so many days allotted to us. So how are we going to use them? If you wake up every morning and say to yourself, "If this was my last day, what am I going to do to make the most out of this?" You say, well, that's morbid. I don't like to think that way. Well, the truth is, one of those days you're going to be right. So why not start thinking about how you're going to make the most of the rest of your life? If you can acknowledge to yourself that life is temporary then you'll be that much more willing to go out and try things and do things that you might not have if you're still so worried about how you're going to live the rest of your life. And I can't share with you strongly enough how many times when we've interviewed people who are near the end of their life, what they've shared is in their regrets is the things they thought they could have, would have, should have done, but never did. So think about your life in those terms and and um again remember we're only here for a limited time make the most of it number two by the way i had a problem with the with the uh slide designs on this so it's going to look a little varied as we go through this but uh the message is what's important not the the, the uh slide itself <sighs> if anybody tells you you know you've you've heard the phrase you know, we all like to make plans and God laughs. Nobody knows what's going to happen next. We're living in such crazy times. Right? And anybody that tells you that they know is lying to you. Nobody knows what's going to happen and what's and what curveball life's going to throw your way. You can't foresee it. All I can tell you is, you know, it's going to happen. So it's good to have a plan. You should plan. Right, but understand that you're going to have to be ready for the unexpected. Right, so again, your plan is what you'd like to have happen, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And you need to be stay light on your feet and ready to adjust to whatever life throws your way. Right, like it says there near the bottom, carrying an umbrella won't prevent a storm, but it can minimize the consequences of that storm. That's what you want to 
do. A lot, your, your plan in life is your umbrella, right? Um, and you're going to have to revise it all the time. And you have to accept the fact that that's going to happen because things aren't going to happen the way you want them all the time. So be mentally prepared for that in advance. Three, what's really important, one of the most important things beside the love of your family and everything else is great friendships. One of the things you discover when you get closer to the end of the life, how important those real friendships were. Those people that you've stayed in touch with for a long period of time who's generally interested in you and you're generally interested in them. We meet a lot of people during our lifetime, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, but we only become friends with a select group. And those deep and lasting friendships, that's what's going to come in handy and most important to you as you get closer to the end of life. So don't take them for granted because those friendships are going to be the investment that you made that are really going to be worth it. The money's going to come and go, folks. You're not taking the money with you, but the but the good friends that you meet and how they impact your life and how they influence how you think, that's that that that's priceless, right? So invest that time to make those friends and, and th those few friends that you have. And you're going to know, by the way, when the, when the good times are coming, all your friends will be there, so-called friends. When the tough times come, your true friends will be there, your real friends, the friends that were always interested in you and not what you could do for them, right? It's, it's very important that you uh, identify those people that were sincere and real and you make the most of those relationships. Four, healthy relationships make your life richer. OK, if you chosen a partner, if you're going through life with a significant other. It's OK to acknowledge that not all relationships are going to last. I mean, is what is what's the first time marriage rate about 50 percent successful? So 50 percent of the time it doesn't work out. Yeah, well, OK. But it's what it's wise to make those decisions um, from a healthy standpoint, from a healthy place uh, and, you know, understand that people change and things are going to go will evolve but if you can find the right person and invest in that relationship that is going to be more valuable to you than just about anything else including your best friends because this is this should be your real best friend i know my wife is my best friend i'm going to spend a lot of time with them um and how you enjoy that time is it comes back down to your attitude and your expectations. Your expectations should have nothing to do with what you expect from them. It should have everything about what you expect from yourself. It's easy to get caught up and lost in what you do for a living or a hobby that you might have or something else. But don't take away from the investment you need to be making in that relationship with that special person you want to go through life with. Uh, it 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 constantly evolving. It's constantly changing, and you have to change with it. That's why relationships are hard, but that's also why they're worth it. Right? And this says in equal amount. I don't think I think you should be looking for ways that you can give more than an equal amount. Because if both of you are giving more than an equal amount to a relationship, that's what's going to make the relationship work. And it doesn't. You gotta fight against it becoming something you can just assume. You need to put yourself in a mindset that you're going to always need to work toward helping making your relationship better. I can tell you for a fact by watching what some of my friends have gone through, how important this is, um, especially near the end of life. I had a friend once who, who um, they found out he had only a certain amount of time to live. He wanted to spend every single moment with his wife. He couldn't stand when he wasn't in her presence. He was always looking for her, wondering where she was, and making sure that he could spend as many quality hours with her as possible. It's funny how we don't do that while we're going through our life, but as we get to the end of it, all of a sudden, that becomes the most important thing. So recognize that in advance. Five, as I said, you're going to have setbacks. Everybody has setbacks. You're not alone. 
Everyone on this phone has had setbacks. It's unavoidable. Some of them pass like the day. Others can really be debilitating, right? But they will come and they will go. And it, again, it's how you decide to react to those challenges that's going to decide your quality of life. What's your best approach? I saw a, a, uh, a YouTube video a few weeks back from Michael Caine, uh, the actor Michael Caine, and maybe you've seen it, but if you haven't, you can look it up, but I'm gonna uh, share with you what I thought was the lesson at it. But Michael Caine was a young actor, just starting out in London. And he was cast in a play. He had a bit role. And the, it was a play. It wasn't a musical or anything. It was a, it was a regular show. And he, he, um, he decided that he was going to... Uh, uh, he, his role in the play was that he needed to come in during while this couple was having a fight. And uh, interrupt their fight and calm them down. Well, as he was waiting backstage to come in, the people on the stage all of a sudden got physical. They started swinging at each other and throwing things. And uh, and the, the male actor on the stage threw a chair and it lodged up against the door that Michael Payne was supposed to come through. And so when it was his cue, he went to open the door and he couldn't open it because the chair was up against the door blocking it. He could just crack it open just a little bit. And he put his head and he said to the actor, can you move the chair so I can come in? And the actor that he was acting with said to him, embrace the difficulty. Embrace the difficulty. And I, at first I said, what the heck does that mean? And he asked, the, the, what, what do you mean embrace the difficulty? And what he said was, if it's a comedy, the fact that the chair is blocking the door, roll over it, flip over the side of it, and come up laughing. Make it part of the play. If it's a drama, pick up the chair and slam it on the ground. Make it part of the play. The point being was, that he used the obstacle that came in his way to decide how he was going to react to it. And he went home to his kids and he said, from now on, this is how we're going to address the problems that come to us in life. Because if we focus on the how we're going to use the problem that's in front of us to serve us best, we're going to be in a much better shape than if we curl up into a fetus position and play the role of the victim. Make a mental note in your mind that when you have problems and challenges, say, how can I best make the, make the best of this situation? And just the fact that you focus on it, even if it only helps you improve a fraction of a percent, is a much more positive outcome than if you just go, oh me, oh my, right? see them as opportunities. And some of these opportunities are really going to be life-changing opportunities, but see them and work with them and make and let them work for you to make the most out of whatever situation you find yourself in. All right, but again, focus on what you can do with them, how you're going to play the cards that were dealt with you instead of saying, well, you, you can't change the cards, make the most of that situation. So I thought that was very eye-opening, and I, I've used that since when I have friends who've talked to me about stuff like that. That's what I tell them. Embrace the, embrace the difficulty. How are we going to make this work for you? I thought that was a great life lesson. Okay, here's something I wish I did better in my life. Life is better when you live, when live within your means. At some time, I'll bet everyone on this call has been guilty of that. You know, where you're spending more money than you had, but, you know, you say, well, we'll make it up. It'll be, but you get ahead of yourself. That's why everybody that I ever know that became pretty wealthy always had the, the underlying philosophy of paying themselves first. They always put money aside into some sort of investment where they couldn't touch it so that it could grow. 
That's why I love renewals. Renewals are a great way to put money aside for that rainy day to know that it'll be there after the fact. But you need to be disciplined about it and explain and, and plan exactly how you're going to budget and how you're going to invest and what percentage of your money you're going to put aside so that you can face those uh, rainy days or have that happy retirement when the time comes. Core values should be known and honored. At this point, every one of you should know who you are and what your life stands for. And if you don't, take some time to take a step back and think about that. What drives your decisions is your core values in life, what you think is important. If being honest is important to you, then and being truthful all the time, then you're going to make decisions from that standpoint. If standing up and doing what's right and being a person of your word is what's important to you, you're going to make decisions from that, that center, that, that, port, that core value. Make sure you're clear with yourself. This is what I this is what I want my life to stand for, and this is what I want to be known for. And then make your decisions that way because it's your decisions that shape your life. It's your decisions that will tell you what to expect. If you don't stand for something, you you'll fall for anything. That's a long term. It's, you know that's been around forever, and it's true. This s well, I won't go into politics, but um, that's. Uh, uh, you're at that point. Every one of you on here are old enough to know that you're at the point that you know who you are and what your life should stand for and use that as your guide to how you should shape your life. Eight, life is better when you invest in your health. Another lesson I should have learned early. All right. Yeah. Um, we all have this one life and some of you are very, very good at uh, what you do to help relieve stress and how you eat and how you sleep and how you do, you know address all those things in life and as you get older this becomes more and more important what i've noticed about people that get to this point in life is that it comes on to them all of a sudden and they weren't expecting it to come so fast none of us want to really think about our mortality until they does well Something when when something happens, right? If you've invested in your health, doesn't mean. Well, uh, I know of plenty of vegans who um, who have uh, had their life end early because they get into an accident, they ran into a situation when they weren't expecting. It was genetic, whatever the reason might be. And so it's not a guarantee, but there is something to be said for taking care of yourself through your whole life. I'll tell you one thing that always stands out to me. So many of my friends were athletes. And when you get to our age, my age is in the in the late 60s, um, all of a sudden, the people that were great athletes start having all kinds of health problems with their joints. They knew they need knees, they knew they need elbows or shoulders, or they have to, because they've worn them out from playing all those athletics earlier in life, or they were joggers or whatever the, whatever it was. That, that that gets into that point. Every one of them. Now, that doesn't mean that in today's day and age, you can't replace these things and still have a quality life. You can, but it's amazing to me that how many people that push themselves so hard when they were younger in life end up having consequences when they get later in life, as opposed to someone who lived a more balanced life. So think about that. Invest in your health. All right. Your actions are what determines the outcomes. There are people who see life as something as variable and it's just it's like Forrest Gump. You're a feather floating in the air. But um, but there are actually direct correlations between what you do and the decisions you make and what you get out of life. The, the sooner you understand that and the consequences, then you can start making the kind of decisions that will will, will lead to better outcomes. You don't plant corn and expect the corn to come up the next day. Right. But you do. But you know that um, if you if, if you know, wheat is going to come up faster than corn. So as it says on the bottom there, if you come up, if you plant wheat, you can get wheat to come up and your plant will lead to a, a quicker return. But again, sometimes it's worth waiting for the return of something that takes longer to cultivate. Your actions are going to determine your future outcomes. Remember that you're making investments in your futures when you take action. 
What isn't working is when you don't take action. Sitting around and saying these are the things you want to do and never doing them aren't going to lead to anything. All right. Yes, you can. You you can. Uh, you know, Garth Brooks sings about a uh, unfulfilled uh, wish, wishes and dreams. Well, th there is something to be said about that. But make make the dream, make the wish that you want to live, and go out and live it, and don't look back. Don't regret. You, you, you're either going to learn something from the experience or you're going to win from the experience. There's no losing, you learn. And when from that learning, you move forward with the facts that they're now, they now are in your life and make that happen. And number 10, life is hard enough. Don't put yourself in situations where you're around people who aren't helping you to grow or you're not helping them to grow and you don't, you know, they're annoying to you or whatever. Uh, you want to be in, you want to be around people that are positive, that are encouraging, that are supportive. You don't need toxic people in your life. And the quicker you eliminate those people, the quicker you're on your way to a much help, happier life. Don't be afraid to say, no, this isn't for me. I'm not going this direction. It's your life. Make the most of it and be around the kind of people that make you feel good about you and you make them feel good about them. And usually, by the way, that's how you get things in life is by giving of yourself. It's not what you can take, it's what you can give. And the more you give, the more you're gonna find you get back even when you weren't expecting it. All right, so that's part one of Lessons of Life. Next week, I'll go into part two. Anybody have any questions about anything we discussed today? Go back and review these life lessons. You'll get the recording. Tomorrow we'll have our call at 9 a.m. Eastern. Hope you can join us. Again, it's your call. A lot more talking. I like the fact that so many of you contributed to today. Tomorrow is like today's call, but on steroids and the fact that it's all about you and the challenges you have. And we'll bring up some of the subjects you brought up and we'll talk them in more detail tomorrow. Anybody have anything at all they want to ask about anything we discussed? No, thank you, Mark. Well, thank you. And guys, go out and create a great day. Thank you. Go out and create a great day, everyone. And um, I'll, hopefully I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Take care. Bye-bye.